Leave the familiar for a while. Let your senses and bodies stretch out like a welcome season onto the meadows and shores and hills. Um, my art is rather different from most people, I think, because I do not conform. I feel that all my life I've had to conform having an a army captain for my, uh, my father. And so now, in my latter years, though I conform mostly because that's the way we live, I come here and my art is myself, is my free expression. The world is, even in it, when you get old, you do not retire, which I thought I was going to, but to paint, then perhaps you would retire into your own place. Colour, I find colour is very important to me and I love colour. So on a drab day, or a rainy old day, if you can come and paint in brilliant colours, it will take you to some other place, um, within yourself maybe. I think life has its ups and downs, and sometimes really great big space of darkness. And so that if you can come and work through that, and come and be creative, you're almost pulling yourself out of the depth of despair. There's more to this world than bricks and mortars and bills and all the things we have to, we have to put up with. That's our life. It's our life's journey. Often we think we're not good enough. Often we think we're not good at many things. You say, but there's no such word as can't. We can all do it. We were born with creative interests. If we've had it knocked out for our life, for our creativity, or rules or regulations, just be. You all can paint, I assure you. If I can paint, I can fly. If I can fly, well, you all can. So get there, get your paintbrushes, and relax and enjoy your leisure because you deserve it and you deserve it for yourself because nobody else can do it for you. This is your own task and to do it would be a really good release of all your sorrows or your happiness or whatever's gone before. This is your moment to enjoy and experiment and have fun. Change rooms in the mind for a day, all the hemispheres in assistance lie beside an actor in your heart. Greet yourself in a thousand other forms as you mount the hidden tide and travel back home. I'm Liz Grinstead and I've always done a bit of art, various types of drawing, because my parents were very good at it. Um, I'm not very good, but it, I find it very interesting, very relaxing, and it's very soothing sometimes. I always do, I feel with the, the art, as I say, I can forget everything, previous problems and that, until somebody knocks on the door. Um, but, uh, yes, it, it, it is something that, I like to do, and sometimes I'll spend several hours on it. I find I paint better at night, so sitting in bed. <laughs> I used to have to go out on the ponies, out riding up in the forest for a couple of hours, de-stress. Yes, it, and the same with art. It can, it can de-stress you. you. You get so absorbed in it that you forget everything. You forget all the hassle in the world and your problems and not only yours, you everybody else's. And yes, it is very, well, it's very therapeutic like that. If it gives you a sense of peace for a few hours or an hour, an hour it, is, it helps you to cope with the rest of the day. Open up to the roof. Make a new watermark on your excitement and love. Like a blooming night flower, bestow your vital fragrance of happiness and giving upon our intimate assembly. <laughs> I used to do a lot of watercolours. 
and I really enjoyed it, but unfortunately the medication I'm on has given me a fine tremor. So I find it difficult to do watercolours now. So, and, and in the end, I decided to try something that maybe doesn't need quite so much, you know, fine work. So I got a lump of clay and started working on that. <laughs> so I'm now making a brain. And if they, when I have my head scan, if they can't find a brain, I'll use that. Because <laughs> sometimes being, having mental illness, it can feel as though your brain is missing. <laughs> I don't think it really matters whether you've got mental health issues or not. Art is for everybody, and I don't think it matters how good you are at it. As long as you enjoy doing it and you can express yourself, it can only be good. But we don't have time in our lives very often to do that kind of thing, or we don't make time for it, which is sad, really. Because maybe if we did, there would be fewer people with mental health problems if we did more of the things that we enjoyed doing and got some enjoyment out of life. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I've seen, I've seen people doing art um, when they've got mental health problems and it's obviously a help and very often people with mental health problems are very creative particularly people who are going through a manic phase but yeah maybe if more people did things that they enjoy doing and were more creative life would be a lot easier all the hemispheres in heaven are sitting around a fire chatting while stitching themselves together into the great circle inside of you. Coming here with the illness, and we've all got something, we've all got our own demons, so to speak. Um, you can push it to the side for a minute. Um, if you like, that's a form of peace of mind because Although it's always there, you forget about it when you're drawing, being creative, having a laugh, mixing. And indirectly, I take that back home with me as well. If I've done a rough sketch or something, I've thought about it, yeah, at the time. It's definitely peace of mind. When I get something right, it's more of a feeling, a feeling inside. Well, yes, I'll, that, I've cracked this, this will go together well. And, it, and it's amazing what you can find in your head. And when you start looking, looking at, I think I mentioned earlier, just walking down the road, looking at objects. Clouds is a good one. That's one I just thought of in the mornings when I look out the window. Clouds are amazing. I've started to draw them lately. <laughs> Okay, my name's Corinne and uh, I'm a student at art and I've been working on a collage for this group. I've been coming here for three years. Um, I came sort of like because uh, I needed um, an outlet for my stress and anxiety and everything else. My eyes have been opened to the other colours that are also around us. The colours that are staring you in the face is one thing, but then um, through learning to mix colours and looking better at things, I can see like more subtle colours. And, and I think I can now tell tones and tints and shades and things like that. So it's kind of like a much deeper world than it was before. I've always been like creative and that, but I've never really sort of used much in the way of paints. And I don't know whether that was because of restrictions that were put on me as a child or whether it was um, because it was messy. And as you get older, you're chastised for making a mess. So I think like, you know, like that that's the transition from being a child into an adult. But what's nice about mixing colours now is that actually I can get in a mess because there's nobody to tell me not to. (laughs) 
you don't have to actually really think about what you're doing when you're doing your art. You just do it and see what happens because it's quite incredible what comes to the surface. The group is quite relaxed and I think, um, I think especially with the mental health issues, I think that a lot of people are worried about going to things in case people, you know, like think that they're a bit strange. But actually, you know, like the fact that we're all strange here makes it like just like perfect for us all, really. Originally, I used to think of abstract art as just being a way that people that couldn't really do art, it gave them license to do it. And um, now that we've started to look at abstract art in college, um, I've, it's actually made me realise that, uh, you know, like that actually life is abstract and actually abstract art is more realistic. Well, this art group has been coming together for about five years now with me. In that time, people have come and gone. Some people have been here right from the beginning. It has become a really close, supportive group of people. But the nice thing is that we also welcome new people in, and I think that they feel comfortable and I think that's partly to do with doing the art, the painting or pottery or whatever it is. It's sort of doing something with your hands, looking, just finding a way to express yourself is a really positive, helpful um, experience for people. Anyone, whether you have mental health sort of history or difficulties, or not, it's just something that we all, all makes us feel happy. Leave the familiar for a while. Let your senses and body stretch out like a welcome season onto the meadows and shores and hills. Open up to the roof. Make a new watermark on your excitement and love. Like a blooming night flower, bestow your vital fragrance of happiness and giving upon our intimate assembly. Change rooms in your mind for a day. All the hemispheres in existence lie beside an equator in your heart. Greet yourself in your thousand other forms as you mount the hidden tide and travel back home. All the hemispheres in heaven are sitting around a fire chatting while stitching themselves together into the great circle inside of you. Mental health is a huge part of my life. Just because mental illness is an invisible illness doesn't mean it isn't there. We have plasters, a screwdriver and a spanner trying to repair the brain. But until the stigma surrounding mental health is lifted, we won't be free.